Hey everyone, Tapdog here with a little Alchemist Helper, and today I wanted to continue the Beginner's Guide series and kind of show you the progress on the account and answer um, one of the more important questions that I've been asked, and that is, what do you do after you have Tiebreaker on your account? And what are your next steps? Kind of, once you get into Tiebreaker um, on your account, you go from being a beginner account, I think, to kind of being in the mid game. Because that's where you're going to spend the most of your time is with Tiebreaker and learning the different mechanics of the game. And I really don't think you get to end game for quite a long time after that. Um, ideally, it's it's kind of when you get to the point where you have an, an fully Onyx deck um, or you're completing Heroics. Either of those kind of gets you towards the end game of this, um, this game. So in the mid game, got a lot of fun things to do. Uh, like a lot of times, you get to play the Onyx Goblin. So I, I had him show up, so I figured I would fight him and uh, start this video out with that. So um, I did get a... Um, I was able to get another Onyx card on this account um, from Heroics, and that's this Elf card here. Um, thankfully, he has already was researched, so I just had to level up the card, and it took a couple days to get the, the dust required, but now he's in this deck... I did not re-optimize the deck though, so that's something I probably need to do. Anytime you get a new Onyx card, it's a good idea to rerun your optimizer because it might prioritize some cards that aren't in your deck that might be a better combo for that card to have in your deck. So, anywho, um, Onyx Kings are walking the park now, not a problem, and that should be the same for you. It shouldn't be too difficult to, to fight and defeat them. And it looks like I got Spirit, which is a new card for this account. So that is good news because I was getting low on my research. I think I have some research going. Oh, I don't have research going right now. So I can uh, at least see if there's any research I can do with Spirit before I start to level it up. There's a couple here I can do for now, and then I'll, I'll level it up off camera here. But let's, uh, let's talk about where we are. So arena-wise... Um, I still am I'm hovering in Diamond 3, and that's, again, mostly because I don't have the uh, the time to play on this account, along with Tap Dog and Underdog, so um, I, I don't spend too much time on here. Usually, just uh, if I have some free time once a week, I might spend an extended period playing my arena here, but typically I don't. Um, this was the week, I believe, that um, Greed showed back up, so I was able to purchase Greed Level 3. I had previously purchased Greed Level 1 and 2, and that's the next thing I would recommend purchasing after you finish getting Tiebreaker. Or really, you can get a little bit of each, but you want to at least be able to have 400 Dark Orbs at any given time so you can buy Tiebreaker. And then pri priority would be buying Greed so you can keep getting more and more gold to buy um, all of your, um, your dust that much quicker, right? Um, after that, I do have enough dark orbs right now for another health upgrade, but I'm actually going to be saving these to start improving my heroics. That's my next goal, is improving my heroics, which means um, what you should be doing after you've gotten Tiebreaker and Greed is save up your orbs for Master Healer and Master Elementalist. Those are the two that are useful in heroics. It will get you further than any of the other abilities. Um, so, you can always go budget for now, like I am, and um, focus on... I use Greed for my heal, and I use um, just regular fire for my damaging right now in Heroics. But um, I'll probably be buying Master Healer first, because that's what I start playing in Heroics with. So if I can get that faster and get my heals faster, I can swap over to damage that much faster as well. So... Um, that's my personal priority, but some people prefer to do damage first, so they might go for Master Elementalist. I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong answer there. I think there's there's pros and cons to both. But uh, for me, since I normally start my Heroics runs with heals, I'm going to go for Master Healer as my, my next uh, focus. Um, so I can kind of um, show you guys where I'm at with the event right now. I believe we're in the middle of the time event. I probably won't finish this. I've only got, it says three days, but that really means you have three and some change. So I've got three days and roughly six hours left on this. I know I'll be able to get to tier 25, but beyond that, I don't think I'll get too far. And again, it's just I'm, I'm not home all the time, so I don't have the ability to play on this account 24-7, unfortunately. But I, I play it when I can. But um, I was... 
able to get the time card, so that's my third copy of it, which means I now have one fused and one unfused copy of it, which is, which is nice. Um, I did get the science card, so I was able to finally fuse that. If you remember from previous videos, I had not finished fusing it yet. So, um, As you get further along, you'll know, but um, these events get easier and easier. It's very easy to beat them, even at the, the full level. The hardest thing is just being able to, to be able to play all your turns in those 10 days. Uh, for my accounts that are on my phones, my, my uh, top dog and underdog, uh, because I have those with me, I'm able to, you know, get a get the plays in in the morning before work. Then at lunch I can play again, and then after work I can usually play two more times, uh, you know, right after work and then before I go to bed. So I usually get four rounds in throughout the day for those, um, and that's enough. But this account, it can only really go before and after, and I usually get two, maybe three rounds in. And because of that just small difference between those, this one just barely doesn't fit all the way. And so for people who don't play as often, um, even if it's just five, five, ten minutes in the day spread out over the course of multiple play sessions, um, if you just don't do that, you, you can't finish it, which is a shame. I don't, I don't know if there's a, a better option or a better way to do it, but it is what it is. I am getting close as well um, to having my next 2,000 gems. I didn't... I probably actually just passed it right now with the Onyx Goblin King. I didn't think about that. So I'll see if there's any packs in the shop that would make sense for me to purchase. I don't know if there are. I know Rodent's in the shop right now, but I think we're kind of in that dry spot where you only have two packs in the shop. Oh, we might be getting Valentine's here probably on Wednesday. So if we get that, um, that might be a decent one with the backfills it got, but I don't know what the... Um, Card's gonna be so right now we have lunar pack and rat pack lunar pack let's just talk about that real quick look at the card pool here um wings is an okay it's kind of a mid-tier onyx moon is not that great of a combo card even with all the backfill love it received uh and then there's nothing that's really a standout here in terms of a final form card um you've got two defensive cards here with moon heroin and moon golem but that's not really helpful to me and I don't think it has any decent critical strikes. Moonflare is probably its best card, but that's a crushing blow, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I think High Tide is also a crushing blow. So nothing here that really is a must-get from that pack. Rat Pack, on the other hand, does have one decent but not great um, final form card. Let me go to the card pool here. Wizard's kind of a middle-of-the-road onyx. Uh, Rodent's kind of a middle to low end gold combo card. Uh, defense combo. This is a critical strike, but that's not a good one. Uh, Ratatosker is your best one here at, say, 3324, um, which, again, is only going to get you to the mid game. I'm, I've taken the 33s already out of my. Well, I had 32s, but I, I have 34 as my lowest critical strike in my arena. So this wouldn't be super helpful for arena. It would be helpful for um, heroics, but. With this being a free-to-play account, my top priority is making my um, arena. And if I get extras, they can go towards the heroics. And so looking at Wizard as kind of a mid-tier and looking at uh, Wings as kind of a mid-tier Onyx, I just don't see a use for either of those. So I don't think either of those would be a good thing for me to invest in right now. I do, like I said, I have 2,300 gems here, so I'll just keep saving and wait for a decent pack. Again, my priority would be maybe something that has a, a 34 or higher critical strike. If it has multiples of those two, that would be useful for me um, because the value would be there. Uh, even if it was double, uh, dipping into something like, um, gosh, what's that called? The, um, the pack with <laughs> Game of Thrones references, uh, Scheming. So that, that pack would... Uh, I've, I've already gotten a Poisonous Prince from it, but uh, it, it's got so many critical strikes that it might be useful to double dip and get the rest of it and might even get the second copy of a Onyx card from there. Didn't do my daily deals yet, but my just right daily reminder for you that uh, claim this because at the very least you'll get six dust worth of um, dust here. Or you could be like me yesterday. Let me show you my yesterday haul. Sort this by newest. I got Cobramon, which if I go to my search here, you can see I actually now have three copies of Cobramon 
And this is a critical strike. This is a pretty decent critical strike. So this, I have about 500 dust right now. I'll probably have a little bit more after I um, recycle some more things here, but that'll be enough to probably level up these Cobra Mon. I think it's seven or 800 dust you need, and I have about that much in, in gold waiting to be recycled. So that'll be a nice one to add into my heroics. Um, I do want to level up that spirit first, so I might do spirit just so I can get the research started and then in the next day or two level up the Cobramon. Um, but speaking of heroics, it did just start today, a couple hours ago my time. And so in heroics, a couple things people forget. You get up to three turns per day and every day accumulate. So it's not just your best score over the course of the week, but it's your best score every day over the course of the week. So make sure you're playing this every single day. If I go here, I can't really see anything. Oh yeah, here we go, I can see rewards. So if you play at least once, you're gonna guarantee to get yourself into this tier and get 20 skulls. But in reality, if you play once, you're gonna get into this tier because not 100,000 people don't play this game right now. I think it's closer to 40,000 and I don't think all of them play uh, heroics. So if you play at least one turn, you should be able to get at least 40 skulls a week at the, at the bare minimum. Um, if you play every single day and just do your best, even if it's just a couple bosses, you should be able to get into 60. You might even be able to get to 80 or 120. Uh, right now, my account is able to beat the first 10 bosses, give or take. Sometimes it's only 8, sometimes it's 11 or 12, but roughly I can beat the first 10 bosses, and I only do it twice a week, and I usually fall somewhere in the 80 to 120. Now, if I played every single day, I'd probably get into 120 no, mu no matter what. I would not get any higher here, though. These ones... Rank 1, to get into Tier 1, you'd have to completely finish all 40 bosses every single day, and it's based on turns. Most of Rank 2 is also beating all 40 bosses. Um, at this point, I think it's like 38 or 40 of, of the 50 top people are completing it fully. So, unfortunate for these two groups here, but that's, that's how it is. This is a static number. It does not change like Arena does. Rank 3 here, right now, it is basically being able to beat the uh, full all the bosses twice, a little bit more than that. So how, how many, about 700 is, is the total um, coins you need to get in order to do that. So that is what that is. But um, my strategy for heroics, I go in with my heroics deck, which here is my current heroics deck. It's basically every card that I own that is not, uh, that is in my arena, plus some extras that are cards that were in my deck at one time, but no longer, like Bat here. Um, Bear Magus, which was in the deck for a little bit. Some defensive cards that just help you get an extra turn to either heal five or damage five. Um, and then some duplicate cards that I used to have when I first started, and they don't need to be in the deck anymore. So they're all, I believe they're all level four or above now. I did have some level threes in here that I leveled up to four recently, just to make the deck be a little bit more consistent. And then I do occasionally check as well. I go to my library and then I search for any cards I have that are level four, five, or fused. And so it looks like elf, because I just got that. I did not put it in here yet. And uh, that's about it. So it is what it is, but I will start on there with my healer ability. So if I go to the deck, I can see I've got my healer on. doesn't matter which healer you use until you get um, master healer here because that does heal you at the start of every turn so at the start of every round in heroics you would get an additional three seven or ten health um, to start with and if you're using master elementalist you do the same amount in damage to your opponent at the start of every turn so it's either three seven or ten damage but dealt to your opponent at the start of every turn um, meaning at the start of the round not at the start of every you know what i mean um, you, you don't do it every turn. That'd be really crazy. So anywho, because I only have these two healers, I just use greed because that's, I like to keep that on and not forget. So you start here. I do two or three boss battles as healer. Then I switch to attack until I get my health down to around 30. Then I switch back to healer. And sometimes I can go back to, um, attacking on the last boss or two if I can. But because I only have 80 cards, I don't last super duper long. Obviously, as this count gets older and progresses, it will have more. Uh, my underdog and my tap dog account both use around 250 to, to 275 cards. You want to be about 250 or less, ideally. 
Uh, and then eventually you want your ratio to be a four to one. So four combo cards to every one final form card because when you have four combo cards that are fused, that will fill your combo meter. Then you use your critical strike card and it releases it. So a four to one ratio is, is the ideal situation you're looking for and you're wanting to be able to play two combos, final form. Two combos, final form. You just do that throughout the whole thing. Um, there are times where you have to delay because your opponent might have their orb meter filled, but the, that's kind of the idea. So this is your next step, heroics. And you keep going for a couple of years, <laughs> and you'll be able to beat heroics. Um, it does take a while, but you will be able to get there. The other thing you should be focusing, though, on, like I said, in Arena, is, is saving up your dark orb so you can buy Master Elementalist and Master Healer. Then after those none of the other abilities is going to be as useful as tiebreaker greed and those two master abilities so then your next focus would be getting your health up all the way to 55 that'll take you about a year to two years to fully do uh the shorter time would be if the higher your ranking the um, slower time is the lower your ranking ranking because again if you look at the um the weekly scores here i'm getting 160 in this tier at the top end, you could be getting 400, so they're getting almost two, almost three times as many Dark Orbs as me, so they're, they're going to be able to finish three times as fast if you're in those legendary categories. Heck, even this one is twice as fast. So, <clears throat> again, you do get Season Rewards as well, but that's not the Dark Orbs, that's just the Gems. So, But the higher you get for that, the, high, the better placement you get as well. But um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on the account, kind of talk about my strategies and what you should do next. If you do have any other questions about what to do after you get Tiebreaker, let me know. All right, and with that being said, take care.